This is not a typical farm. And these are not typical farmers. Nothing here will ever be the same again, because these farmers have changed their way of thinking. Until the change, the Turner family followed the same traditions and philosophies that had molded the 20,000 hectare family farming enterprise for 150 years. Despite a sustained drought and harsh economic pressures, they held on to their reputation as one of the finest merino sheep producers in southern Africa. But they were losing money fast. When their debt mounted to millions, conventional professional agricultural advisors said, sell off arable land to pay your debts. But the Turners hesitated. And then they took a life-changing step into the unknown. They embarked on a three-day value management workshop run by impartial facilitators with absolutely no experience in farming, but plenty of success in introducing a powerful, innovative decision-thinking process into industry, commerce, and public organizations. It was a first for us working with farmers, and we were quite frank with them. We could not guarantee that our program would work in their situation, so we said to them, don't pay us unless it works. Dick, I'm glad it did work, and it did work wonders for them, and it stopped a potentially disastrous sell-off for very valuable land. Five years down the road, innovative decision thinking through value management has become a way of life for the Turners, and a constant source of amazement to their neighbors who witness the steady stream of outlandish projects that are launched on the vast family ranch. But as the drought and economic factors continue to punish other farms, nobody can ignore the fact that the Turner farm is flourishing. And the ideas and opportunities seem endless, as the Turner family keeps discovering new ways of making the most of their assets. We took the Turner family through the same step-by-step -step value management process that we follow with all of our clients. Step one getting the members of the team together to collect all of the relevant information necessary for defining a rich question in order to optimize the decision-making process. In the Turner's case, the team included the whole family as well as a few outside observers. And as you would expect with such a group of individuals, all the typical human dynamics pitfalls were present. Family politics, fixed ideas, preconceived solutions, group think, crossed lines of communication, tradition, the influence of bad advice, differing values. These all had to be recognized and overcome. This involved learning interpersonal skills like active listening, group decision making, opening up and complementary transacting. Today these skills are second nature on the farm and help to create a cooperative environment in which each person is able to make a maximum contribution. Step two in the value management process is to set a group objective, and then to break that information down that's been collected and assign functions to each component. After much discussion, the Turner family agreed that their major objective was to achieve a 20% profit by the end of the year. And so they began to break the facts down into two-word definitions describing what functions had to be performed in order to achieve their objective. Using special information processing techniques, they were able to evaluate the functions. In this way, they came to the conclusion that their basic function was to manage assets. There's no question about it. The result of the value management exercise we did uh, pointed out the fact very, very emphatically that, that we were in fact, fact more asset managers. That was really our main business, was manage our assets rather than, than the practicalities of farming. With this new insight, the Turners resolved to become smarter about managing their assets. 
clearly one of their critical assets was fodder for their sheep. And the burning question was how to obtain high-protein fodder at a cost-effective price. Step three in the process is to apply creative thinking in order to establish innovative ways of reducing cost. The Turners applied creative thinking techniques to the fodder question and came up with the inspiration of commercially exploiting an Australian plant called Atroplex. It certainly was a far cry from the traditional chocolate maize feed. But on the other hand, what with its low water requirements and high protein content, it looked as if it might just work. All great inspiration should be thoroughly evaluated and investigated before they become a common practice. This is what happens in the fourth and final step of the value management process. The Turners put the Atroplex idea through a battery of finely tuned value management evaluation techniques and it looked very good on paper and in the field and the tasting committee approved. There was one remaining challenge to win over potential investors who might be resistant to change. The ultimate result of developing all these assets to, our, to the maximum extent of course could be that we would increase our, uh, our asset value of our properties by at least five times. And I think the most important thing of all is that we could decrease the cost of running, the capital cost of running one livestock unit from around about 600 rand per livestock unit at current market prices to something of the order of 100 to 150 rand. That I think is the most significant development from the, from the point of view of, of actually increasing our asset value. Needless to say, the tenants were quite happy to pay our fee. Mm. And we proved that the four steps of innovative decision thinking through value management works just as well in the world of farming as they do in the worlds of commerce, industry and public affairs. Changing thinking patterns forever. What happens when a group of people work together but do not share a common goal? It's hit and miss, and sooner or later they are going to experience problems, especially during difficult times. And what happens when their problem is so large that it threatens to destroy everything they have worked to achieve? It will probably overwhelm them, unless they take it down to size and break it into manageable parts. Sounds like common sense, doesn't it? Yet, you know, a great many organisations get into serious difficulty simply because their people do not have common goals and because they don't take their problems and break them into smaller parts. And so it was on the Turner's farm before they applied the value management process. Despite their considerable abilities, experience and assets, they were living from crisis to crisis with no clear direction. In fact, they were on a one-way road to bankruptcy. So to the second step of the value management process, setting goals, processing the information. This was very important towards their recovery. Using the human dynamic skills they learnt in the first phase of the process, as well as some special analytical techniques, the Turner family set out to identify their goals. At first, it seemed that their major task was to avoid bankruptcy. But something new happened as they began to discuss and analyze the facts. Facts like how to best capitalize on their irrigation water rights and how to increase their sheep's lifespan from around two years to possibly five years. As they shared their different perspectives, 
they started to see things differently. And at last, they agreed that what they would really like to do was to make a 20% profit by the end of the year. In value management, once a goal has been set, the problem is divided into functions that describe what has to be done in order to achieve the goal. Functions are expressed using two words only, a verb and a noun. The basic function of this object is to make marks. Yes, the two word description is very important because it forces people to focus on the vital question of what must be done. It also facilitates consensus. With simple two word definitions, there is no doubt as to what is meant. Before long, the Turners put together a sizable list of functions that needed to be performed in order to achieve their goal. Functions like plan operations, market products, harvest fibers, grow produce, research technologies. As they debated among themselves and subjected the functions to analytical techniques, they came to the life-changing conclusion that their main business was not farming, but managing assets. I think a, a most important thing there is that everybody that took part in that value management exercise actually owned that, owned that objective. You know, it was an objective that was reached, not, not, not actually by consensus, but by an objective uh, value management technique. And I think that's very important. Uh, nobody could say that they hadn't discussed it properly, they hadn't had their input and the, the result was objective measurement, which is something we try to apply in our breeding programs. So it's, it, it makes sense to us. Identifying the basic function is a key step in value management. With the group's basic function known, the focus shifts to obtaining greater value. Our formula for determining value is function over cost. Clearly then, value increases when cost decreases. In order to apply this formula, the function must be analysed further with an eye on costs. A number of techniques are used in this further analysis. And at the end of the step, the value management team should have a clear picture of high cost areas and unnecessary cost. And there should be no doubt about where the biggest opportunities are for cost improvement. The Turners discovered that they were spending far too much money on traditional fodder for their sheep and they realized that unless they found a more cost-effective way of managing this critical asset, they would not make their 20% profit target. They also realized that they had a cost-effectiveness problem with the sheep themselves. For generations, the Turner family had taken pride in their prize-winning stud merino sheep. But under the hard glare of cost-to-function analysis, it was clear that the animal's low birth rate was a liability. And as the Turners were to discover in the next phase of the process, value management leaves no room for sacred cows or sacred sheep. We are all born creative, and most of us seem to lose the touch somewhere along the way. We get into level-headed careers and leave the creative stuff to artists and poets whose minds are quite unlike our own, right? No, wrong, very wrong. Recent studies show that all human brains are built to a basic pattern. There are two hemispheres, one dealing with level-headed logical thought processes and the other dealing with shapes and forms and creative ideas. Most of us have one dominant hemisphere, 
usually digital. But each one of us can learn to awaken our analog brain and use our tremendous inbuilt creative potential. It's precisely this awakening of our untapped creativity that separates value management from other problem-solving processes. We have found that both corporately as well as individually, incredible solutions come about when people learn to use their inborn creativity. Like muscle, our brain becomes more powerful when exercised and wastes away when not put to use. You know, our education systems and job environments tends to develop our digital brain. The third step of value management, creative thinking, bypasses our digital brain and exercises our analog brain, focusing a new dimension of brain power into the subject. It was all new to the Turner family members, and not everybody was sure it would work. How would it help achieve a 20% profit on the farm by the end of the year? On the other hand, logical thinking definitely worked. It had helped them to pinpoint the key problem areas in their business. And now the task was to determine how to tackle these opportunity areas. Surely it made good sense to put their well-developed digital brains to use by continuing along the tried and tested logical route that had already taken them so far. Rationalizations for not creating and satisfaction with the status quo are just two of the great many factors which block people from using their creative powers to solve problems and identify opportunities. You're right, Paul. In a value management workshop, participants are made aware of the many different attitudes, fears, habits, and other factors that inhibit creativity. And then they are encouraged to work together to eliminate them. The Turners faced the challenge squarely as they set out to discover what creative thinking techniques could do for their situation. Could these methods show them how to improve cost effectiveness in their problem areas and obtain a better return on the assets they managed? There was only one way to find out. And so the Turners began to explore new avenues of thinking, not stifled by the judgments of the digital brain. What about propagating drought-resistant pastures rather than using lucerne? This sparked a creative discussion that led to the conclusion that from both a water utilization and a protein content point of view, an Australian plant called Atroplex offered much greater value-added benefits than traditional fodder crops like lucerne, wheat and maize. What about test tube lambs to increase the birth rate? This led to some experimentation and eventually to a decision to try the unthinkable, crossing the sacred merino sheep with fin sheep. What about the wild game resources? Game farming, hunting, a timeshare resort, were some of the ideas that came out of this line of thought. The floodgates were open and the Turners found that not only did they have many more assets than they had realized at first, but there were many different ways to optimize them. We find that with the most hard-nosed, practical-minded people, once they discover and start using their creative abilities, they are hooked for life. I think the, the big point about it is that whenever we look at something, we can use what amounts to a value management assessment to decide whether we're going to do it or not. A world patent on a machine that dehusks Atroplex seeds, plans for a gliding center, and ongoing research into the nutritional properties of the farm's indigenous plants are just some of the consequences of the creative thinking culture that has taken root on the Turner farm.
When this farm was in trouble, there was only one major idea at first, sell arable land. After two days' exposure to value management, there was a host of new alternatives. There was a new spirit of hope, a new quality of teamwork, and a new objective. But there were also concerns. Would these wonderful creative ideas really work? Would they save the family farm? Or were they too impractical, too expensive to implement? The fourth and final step of value management, implementing change, is a crunch phase. It is here that ideas are turned into reality through a comprehensive process of evaluation, investigation, recommendation, and finally, implementation. Each idea is carefully sifted and evaluated in terms of function and cost effectiveness. The best ideas go through a process of investigation. Crucial questions are asked and answered here. Questions like, do we need additional capital? Is there a market? Do we have the skills? And what are the risks? The Atroplex idea looked promising in the evaluation process, and so the team decided to investigate further. Could this plant ultimately be the answer to the farm's fodder problems? A nursery was established to accelerate propagation, and the plant's growth exceeded all expectations. It flourished on poor soil, with a minimum of irrigation. The sheep loved it, and the genetically improved variety was now frost resistant. The atroplex also greatly increased the carrying capacity of the land. Sheep that grazed the natural scrubby vegetation were wearing their teeth out on the sand while feeding so close to the ground. There was no worn teeth problem with atroplex, meaning a greater life expectancy for sheep that graze on this plant. What's more, the turners established that there was a worldwide market for their atroplex seedlings. The idea of increasing the merino's lambing rate by embryo transplantation did not fare so well during evaluation and investigation. There were technical problems, and the increase in fertility was not enough. So the turners tried crossing their merinos with a highly fertile finished breed, the fin. These experiments eventually led to a real breakthrough. Substantially greater fertility, but no loss in wool and mutton quality. A lot of people and a lot of organizations do not welcome change, even when it comes in the form of proven good ideas. That's a fact of life. Absolutely. That's why a vital part of the implementation steps deals with methods you can use to recommend your good ideas. These methods are potent persuasive tools, enabling you to present cost and sales benefits in hard facts. The Turners had a capital problem. They had viable ideas but they needed money to pay their debts and to invest in their ideas. Their solution was to turn to another of their creative ideas, the marketing of their assets as an investment. They produced a brochure outlining their thinking and offered investors an opportunity to buy into the Turner Trusts. The capital problem was solved, and today investors are participating in many different facets of the Turner's thriving family business. Value management carries right through to the final implementation of a project and the post-implementation status audit, making sure that all projects are carried out according to plan and verifying that they have met expectations. For the Turner family, value management provided the catalyst that made the difference between imminent bankruptcy and a booming business that keeps on growing. The assets that form the foundation of their success were always there. It just required a new way of thinking to recognize them and to start managing them creatively. Value management provided that new way of thinking.